Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. Welcome to my new subscribers. We've had a few more join us, which is really great. I hope you enjoy my yarn adventure content of what I've been up to in the last week. Well, first of all, since the start of Mother's Day Sunday, we've had torrential rain, which meant our community market was washed out and I couldn't have a fundraising store for Hema. However, we have almost reached halfway in our fundraising for Emma's therapy pool. We need to raise we need to raise twenty thousand and we're just over nine thousand dollars raised now. So no doubt next month hopefully the rain will go away. It is now Mon Tuesday. Monday was rain. Tuesday is rain. Apparently we're going to get five days of rain and in that five days we will get nine, uh, five months of rain in five days. However, you just have to go with the flow and hopefully there's no flooding. But the trucks have got through because today I got happy mail. I've got some acquisitions, some finished objects, some inspired projects, a lot to share with you, some yarny birthday gifts. So grab your favourite beverage and join me in my yarn adventure. Let's get started. So first of all, I was really excited when I got the message that my acquisition here was here. But when I went to the post office, I got the surprise of ta -da, my um, happy mail from the, the my yarny corner, Alex. So first of all, I am buying her advent. Um, calendar. I like it because last year I just did the tea advent and when you do a yarn advent if you have to buy it at the end of the year it's a lot of money and with this you can buy each month and even though she's not doing internationally I made a arrangement with her and we do it through PayPal and she sends it to me and this is the first lot. I have opened the top now this is day one to three I'm glad it's not individual days because the teas took forever and it's all bagged up. And then she sent me, because we said we would send a few at a time, days four to six. These are going to go in my little ventilated bag here that I picked up from the local Japanese store. It's a little Ziploc bag and I'll keep them back there until December. She sent them because... I actually won um, a prize in her make-along, her shawl make-along. I won, um, I guess, the prize that Danny picked the shawl in the colours he liked. Um, he thought they were most strong and powerful. There were lots of nice shawls and he picked mine. And I could go online and um, pick some yarn from their Etsy shop. Now, what have I got in here? <gasps> This was the yarn I picked. Um, it's four ply or fingering or I don't know what you'd call it, sport weight. It's called Ice Cave and Danny um, dyed that. I really like it. It's lovely and soft. It's 75% um, superwash merino and 25% nylon. Isn't that beautiful? And as a surprise... She has sent me a Galaxy Hot Chocolate. We get Galaxy Chocolate here, but we don't get these. So this will be awesome to try. Even though it's raining, it's incredibly warm and humid. We've got the air cons on and I'm having a bad hair day. But trust me, I will still drink this. I can't thank Alex enough because she was sending me this and she included my Advent stuff um, to save on postage. So yes, thank you so much, Alex. I really enjoy the make along, which brings me to, before I go into my acquisition, I might have to make some room. <laughs> um, she's having another um, make along. And I think it's, I'll put the hashtag, the correct hashtag, it's inspiration make along. And basically you are inspired by a fellow podcaster who shows you a pattern or yarn or something they're making and you're inspired to make it now it's an Instagram make along but it should be a lot of fun and I was watching um, Karma is a Stitch and at, 
on the weekend because I couldn't do the markets and it's pretty miserable to go out for Mother's Day, I decided I would tidy up my yarn stock because I was looking for some wool to give to a friend and I hadn't been able to find it. And I came across some Bernay baby blanket. This is the only Bernay yarn I have in my yarn stock. And every time I've looked at these big balls, I've gone, I don't really know why I got it because I don't know what I'm going to make. But as I said, I was watching Karma is a Stitch and Anthony is making a knitted blanket with Bernay. I'm not sure it's this one, but it is a Bernay blanket yarn. And I thought when I came across it, that's what I will do. I am crocheting a baby well, it's going to be pretty heavy for up here in the tropics because it's quite heavy. But I'm going to say it's a baby play mat, a tummy time mat. And I am crocheting this up. It will almost empty out a drawer because they were huge balls. I'm now onto the second ball. So that's my first inspired project by Anthony at Karma is a Stitch. Make sure you check out the channel. All the patterns and channels and tutorials I mentioned will be listed in the description below and hopefully you'll click on the links and check them out. Now, my acquisition is from Bendigo Woolen Mills, also to do with the My Yarny Corners um, make-along. Because I've been watching a lot of knitting channels and becoming inspired, and I'm going to step outside my comfort zone and try something new. So I have went on to um, Bendigo Woolen Mills in Victoria and I found some cotton. I've forgotten what it's called. There's not a lot of information on the label, but I have bought quite a bit of this Bendigo cotton. It's eight ply cotton for a project in different colours. In this color I know I have bought set amounts to go for set projects first time ever I've worked out what I need so one project is going to be that color there's no color names I can't even tell you I just know it's eight ply cotton um, there's not a lot of info on the labels and I also bought here's a packing slip it might tell me what it's called Dun dun dun. It's cherry berry is the colour and it's cotton splash. Now they had this on special. I think it only cost me six dollars a ball and they are 100 gram balls. I know that much and I know they had the right meterage in. I then bought baby meadow four ply winter skies and indigo for another project that I'm going to make. This is 100% um, Merino fine wool, baby medio indigo, and this one is called Winter Skies. I'm going to put those together for another project. This was packed lovely, even though it's a plastic bag and it came from Victoria. It was packed, packed in perfect rows, perfectly sealed up, um, not with a packing slip, so it tells you. And yes, I'm really happy with the way this arrived. Which brings me to my last video when I said about my Hobie package that I was disappointed in. So I did email Hobie and um, letting them know I wasn't happy and how it had arrived and a little disappointed after being a customer for a number of years. Thinking they'd appreciate the feedback. Well, let's just say the email they sent me left a very sour taste in my mouth. I wasn't happy. Um, it was a feedback email. I wasn't chasing a refund or a credit or a placement. I just wanted them to know they needed to take greater care with packaging. And cut a long story short, because it went on for a while. In the end, I could, by sending photos and close-ups, I could prove it was their end that had messed up. I also realised after the video I was missing two items from the parcel. Yesterday, I got an email saying they had refunded me for the two items and two of the Malaga that they felt um, looked damaged. So, look, at the end of the day, they did the right thing, but I did get the impression the further away you are from Hobie, Southern Hemisphere, 
um, they don't care. And I did get Reeves and thing to read the email and they said it was a bit, mm. And then I got a Yanni friend to read the email and she was going to buy from Hobie and she said, no, not if that's their response when you offer feedback. So, hey, I did put in, thank you. Um, there are lots of young companies out there I can buy for who um, appreciate business from the Southern Hemisphere. Um, doesn't mean I won't buy from them again. I know lots of people are doing Hobie yarn reviews and they do have some lovely yarns. Just at the moment, they've left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, even though they've done a refund and what have you. But to be fairly honest, all the emails and what I had to say for them to come forward with that was just a bit much. So I'm really happy with my acquisitions. Alex packed it beautifully. It, look, I... I'm not going to open my advent um, things until Christmas. I'm not even going to take a sneak peek. It's called the very Yorkshire advent. And for those who don't know or haven't watched videos about me before, I was originally born in Rotherham, Yorkshire, England. So I am what my dad would call a Yorkshire lass. I have lived a very long time in Australia and I am an Australian citizen. But when I saw the Yorkshire advent, I thought, that's great. And the fact that I can buy a bit each month rather than one big cash outlay at Christmas was very attractive. So where do we go from here? I'm going to show you something that I got from my birthday from the boys. Well, first of all, if you've been following me for a while, you know I love tea cozies. Hence my naked gardener tea cozy I made. They're my favourite project to make and I'm getting more creative and more um, involved designs, I guess. I haven't designed a crazy one myself yet. I stick to pretty basic ones. So Reeves, my younger son, he I have Lonnie, Lonnie Pryor's three of her books. She wrote four. The very first one was out of print and very difficult to get and he finally got me Wild Tea Cozies at her first ever tea cozy book so now I have all four of hers and along with it he got me killer tea cozies which is actually sewn tea cozies with material with like templates to make them and there's like that's a cat one there's like a crown one with a template and he said just because she did a bit of sewing and he said and I could get them as a package deal so I now have her four books and a um, tea cozy book, which I can actually sew with material. So you never know. I am planning to make my first Lonely Pride tea cozy. They're not easy. There is a lot involved. And I'm going to bite the bullet and step out of my comfort zone and have a go. So that was what Reeves got me. He also, for Mother's Day, he designed what he calls I could knit or crochet a pillow. He graphed up something for me and when I get started on it, I'll show you. And it was part of my Mother's Day present. Along with a box set, for those in the UK, of only fools and horses. Yes, I watched one season of this when I could a long time ago and I really liked it. And I don't know, we were talking about it late one night and that was my box set for Mother's Day. Only Fools and Horses. So I've been enjoying that. It's very old, but I do laugh and find it funny. So Thing. Thing really surprised me for my birthday. Besides the perfume, and he bought me a, a um, what do you call it, dash cam for my car after I had a very close incident on a roundabout with an election vehicle. And um, I'm feeling better now about during, just after my birthday, my son's partner had a really bad car accident in France. Everything's fine now, but yeah, it was pretty bad and could have been a lot worse. And yet again, it, he, he was his car was hit, and, hit by a drunk driver. Um, my mother was killed by a drunk driver. So please, do not drink and drive. Catch a cab, designate a driver. Because usually it's not you that gets hurt, it's the person you hit. So yes, I have a um, what dash cam, I guess you call it. And she talks to me. 
I, had a, I drove to work today with her talking to me. But that's not what he really surprised me with. What he surprised me with is he went on to my Ravelry. Because I was saying I have started doing a Ravelry wish list for family and friends who want to buy me a pattern. Because there are so many patterns on Ravelry that I like. And he was like, what, what? And I didn't think he was listening. Well, he went on to Ravelry and he bought some patterns. But he just didn't send me the PDFs. He did up a file and he put them in a file. Now, one of them isn't in here. It's over there. First of all, one of my patterns was the Honey Badger Stuffy. Um, this is a bit of a tongue-in-cheek thing I want to make. The pattern wasn't that cheap. That's why I've always bought it. Up. And he actually put them in sleeves and stapled them together like booklets. So that was number one. This is... I can't, Kahana Convertible Skirt by Gypsy Rose. Gypsy Rose is an Australian who used to have a YouTube channel and she stopped for different reasons. One of the number of Australian channels that started and ended up stopping um, for different reasons to do with how difficult it is. But yes, I've always wanted this. I, I think I would make it shorter and it's something I thought I would be able to sell on my charity stall because we're a bit at a beach and it's a great beach skirt. It could also be like a strapless top. But yes, he bought me that. The other one, and he, yet again, he stapled them and put them all in the little sleeves so I could see. The other one he got me is the Rock Rocket Tee. Um, and I have actually started that one. Uh, it was one of the things I have cast on. I actually bought the Bendigo yarn for that, but I did have some yarn in my stock that I had picked up really cheap. If you hang on, I'll get it. I won't be a moment. So this is the Rocket Tea pattern. I have never knitted a top for myself, but I am going to give this a go. Um, and I will put this in Alex, the yarn, my Yarn and is inspired projects because there was someone who inspired me to make this. But I can't remember the full name of her channel, so I'll let you know as I progress. And the yarn, I am using my bag that was sent to me by Polly. The yarn I am using is Dreamtime Baby uh, Merino Wool, four ply. Now this was what I used to make Alex's shawl with when I did her shawl make along. Same sort of yarn, different colours. This one colour, now this is normally $10 a, I have to use glasses, 50 gram wool with 169 metres. So it's not normally a cheap wool. But this pink colour, a lot of it appeared on a clearance table at my spotlight for $2 a ball. And I managed to get it in more than enough to do my rocket tea. So that's what I'm starting with. If it goes really well, well, I'll use some of my Bendigo yarn to make another one. So, yes, thing went all out, visited my Ravelry wish list, did up a file and printed them off. He said, I'll email you the PDFs, but I wanted you to have something to unwrap. And that's why he did it that way. And I didn't even think he was listening to me when I said I was setting up a list. Anyway, what else have I got? So finished objects. My finished objects are, I've been doing uh, Nan's Next Lots, Luck of the Draw, Make Long Number 5. And I've done a couple before. And the theme of my um, Luck of the Draw was um, Rainforest Meets the Reef. Now it's going for 20 weeks, but I've stopped at 12 or 13 weeks because I just wanted like a big, a, a reasonable size lap gown. I didn't want a full size blanket and I have finished it off. Ta -da! So there it is, edged with a border, lovely border. And what I did was I finished it with the colour I started with, which wasn't the one she drew out, but that's my... Lock of the draw, number five, lap gown, all finished. And when I was clearing up my yarn stock, I picked out colours, the lock of the draw six, 
So I hope Nan's next knots is doing a luck of the draw six because I have it all put away ready to go. Um, I do enjoy them. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, you get random colour choices and they always look great. That's the thing. We shouldn't stick to traditional colours. We should mix and match and step outside our comfort zone. And I did mention with all this rain, I've had a bit of a cast on party and I was doing different things. Um, because you get a little sick of TV and I, I like to knit or crochet when I'm doing TV. So my finished object is this slouch beanie. I make this a lot. I actually do sell them in my Etsy shop. Um, with, further south they're coming into winter. I know Janice in Victoria said it was minus seven and I couldn't believe how cold that would be. I've experienced minus eight in the Arctic. But I make this beanie, slouch beanie. Now, it is a free pattern. I'm not sure if it's still available. The Blue Brick Handicrafts. Now, CA, I think that must be Canada. I've made it for years. And it is the men's slouch. But I always say it can be a unisex slouch. So I have made this one, if I can find it, but uh, probably not. Hang on a sec, it's over there. I've made it in Bendigo Wool and Mills Pure Wool Bloom. It's like a variegated reddish. I bought quite a bit of this and when I was tidying up my yarn stock, I found a ball of this. They're 200 gram balls and that's what's left. So I could probably make a smaller beanie with what's left. But that's what it looks like. It has, it actually can have a much bigger brim. It can go to like that, but I tend to do it that way. And it has a nice star back to the point that I cast on a second one. I rarely show you a whip, but I thought I'll show them together. Ta -da. Now tidying up my yarn stock, I found some Lion Brown Fisherman's Wool. I bought a lot of it when it went out, uh, when they discontinued it. And I have always made the slouch beading in the Fisherman's Wool and it always sells. So I had like a bit left and I have another one on the needles to finish this off. So yes, I guess as um, some people are doing stitch your stash, I guess I'm stitching my stash. I'm trying to make room and reduce some of what I've got to be able to set it out better so I can actually find what I've got instead of thinking, do I still have that? Did I give it away? Can't remember. So yes, it was important for me to tidy up my um, yarn stock and go through and see what I have before I buy more yarn. Um, I've also been watching Stephen West because uh, I on Ravelry like a lot of his patterns and um, I was watching something today where he was interviewed and talking about colour and different knitting stitches and what you can do and um, don't be surprised if I don't come back next year with a Stephen West pattern and I've really stepped outside my comfort zone. Anyway guys I'm just looking at my table. I think that's everything I have caught up with this week um, I'll still keep making things ready for June's market day um, we never get this much rain in May um, just goes to show you things are changing in the world I won't be a moment I've got a knock at the door sorry about that that was my neighbor asking about something I oh, just a faint little knock um, she because when I come home sometimes she knows I like a nap Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this yarn content. Let me know what you're making. Are you stitching your stash? Have you been inspired by another podcast or, or a knitter or a crocheter or someone who sews? Because it can be any craft if you go into My Yarny Corners Inspiration Make Along on Facebook. Um, make sure you check out... Um, come as a stitch if you haven't already and see Anthony's blanket and see why he inspired me to use this Bernay yarn. 
I think I've had the Bernay yarn and the Fisherman's Wool for at least three years in my stock and it's time for it to be made up and move on. Okay, until next time, stay safe, stay well and let someone inspire you to make your next project. Bye for now.